All right, YouTube, once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. Talking Auburn football, go ahead and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Also, become a member of the channel. Definitely appreciate the members that we already have. Going to have some perks definitely once the season starts. And a few comments in the comment section has led me to this video and the dumpster fire talk the four and eight talk the brian harson can't ret- recruit talk has led me to this video as well brian harson inherited an auburn program that was number 48 in recruiting at the time that he signed the paperwork to become auburn's head coach By the time signing day comes around, he's among the top 20. So I I don't understand the logistics of Brian Harson can't recruit. Mind you, now I'll, I'll say this. This is in no way excusing the six and seven season, which a lot of coaches have their first year, by the way. But I'm going to tell you why a lot of the Auburn fan base are upset about the 6 and 7 season. Had it not been for Auburn ha- Oh, this is a car cast by the way. Big shout out to Gregory Lawrence. If Auburn didn't dangle the carrot like they nor- like they do mid-season, everything's in front of them because if you all remember right, Auburn had the opportunity to where if they won out, which it was very plausible for them to do so, considering how everything went down, Auburn would have been in a very good position at the end of the season, which is really unrealistic for a first-year head coach in the SEC, especially nowadays. What a lot of people don't take into account back in 2013, when Gus Malzahn took Auburn to the 2013 championship you had a lot of players up from that team that if Auburn won the national championship, they would have had they would have been the first set of Auburn players in Auburn history to win two national championships while they were on the campus of Auburn University. Now, I hope you all understand that. I hope you also understand that Auburn inherited a really nice set of offensive linemen, had an experienced set of defense defensive personnel, and also This really wasn't a new a culture change for Gus Malzahn because he coached the majority of the players on this team from the 2010 team, the 29 team, however you want to call it. Brian Harson is coming into this thing totally out of nowhere, totally out of his element, totally out of his cultural comfort zone. And six and seven, I'm telling you, is not acceptable. We're we're not going to do that on this channel and say that you know we can give anyone a pass for going six and seven i just want you guys to think a little bit though considering that what my my guy joy joe toils called plug and play players majority of the players that had a significant role on this team were not auburn players the year prior they were transfer players now you can argue with me if you want which I welcome you to. Auburn doesn't retrieve some of these plug and play players from 2022. I mean, 2021. We're looking at a different situation. Just think about all the guys that left prior to the season, who Brian Harson had to plug and play and still give himself and give Auburn a legitimate opportunity to be in the conversation mid-October. Now, do any of you all want to consider how the thing collapsed in the beginning, in the first place? I want you to leave in the comment section why you think Auburn had the consecutive losses down the stretch. I'll tell you why a team usually has losses like this. One, you have an inexperienced team that are... That don't they haven't played together 
Half the guys didn't even know each other. Two, you lose your starting quarterback. That sucks. Bo Nix was actually on a roll. He was starting to kind of come into his own. He gets hurt. Brandon Council, offensive line gets hurt. A lot of you guys are talking about, you know, the pass protection. But the problem was the run blocking. The problem was the run blocking at times, more so than the pass protection. On many opportunities, Bo Nix had the time needed, necessary, for the typical Power 5 quarterback to be able to drop back, throw the ball, complete the pass. So I want to know in the comment section what you guys genuinely think about the recruiting class. I mean, about recruiting at Auburn, where Auburn's headed. You got true Auburn facilities champion that says, hey, once the facilities comes in, we'll be good to go. But facilities didn't give up that last touchdown to Alabama in that champion in, the, in that uh, Iron Bowl. Right. Facilities also didn't beat Arkansas and Ole Miss. Facilities also didn't, you know, give Auburn an opportunity on the road to Penn State, guys that never really played before. And I'm just picking on you, true Auburn champion. I think you have make a lot of good points. But I know this is the second video in a row that I'm picking on you. But we're talking about uh, recruiting. You know, what is the, what what is the perceived problem? Now, like I said before, when it comes to recruiting from a numeric standpoint, Texas A&M, Alabama, and Georgia is whooping Auburn's ass all over the board. But Auburn is getting, in my opinion, some quality players. Got some quality players from this last class. Um, also want to give a shout out to Rednecks for Catholics. Um, definitely love him on the channel. Joe Toils, uh, Scotty Boyd, Wesley Cooley. Uh, matter of fact, Tony Williams actually came. I was like, holy shit, I hadn't seen a comment from Tony Williams in months. But let me know what you think about this video. Go ahead and like the video, comment, and subscribe. Become a member to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. And uh, like I said before, a big shout out to True Auburn Champion. Definitely love his input. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger. War Eagle.